In the previous unit, we discussed mean structure models, models that are appropriate when we have factors or groups on the x-axis, and what we're seeking to explain are mean differences between those groups or between treatment conditions. Now, not all situations have factors as our x variable. A whole different class of models, but still a member of the general linear model family, are regression models. These are models where the x variables are interval or ratio scaled. So in essence, we're predicting something quantitative on the basis of something else quantitative. When I first introduced linear models, the first model I showed you was in fact a regression model, a situation where we were trying to understand the cost an individual paid at a nightclub on the basis of the number of drinks individuals actually consumed. Now in this case, we were discussing a functional relationship, a relationship where we actually knew the function, the related number of drinks on the x-axis here, to the cost an individual paid. And in this situation, we had no error. That is, individuals who bought the same number of drinks, let's say one drink here, paid identical amounts at this club. Now in this case, this was because I contrived an example where the price of that night at the club was based on a cover charge, $60, plus $13 for each drink consumed. So a fixed cost for each drink led to a situation where there was no error in the data. That is, individuals who drank the same number of drinks paid identical amounts at the club. Now, in all of our models since then, we've included an error component. And this is because when we're forming statistical models, we don't understand or know the true functional relationship between our variables. So, as we go forward, we'll still have an error component even in these regression models. In essence, capturing what would really be true in this situation. That is, people would pay different amounts based on which drinks they actually purchased, not just the number of drinks purchased. So let's actually move on to another fictional example, but one where we do have some error in our model. And let's see how we can form this regression model in the same way. Now let's imagine that we're interested in how study time, that is the number of hours somebody studies each week, relates to a final score on some exam. Now, ethically, we can never do this study experimentally. We couldn't randomly assign students to study a particular amount. But for now, let's imagine that we have some kind of course that's not in the context of real school, but one where we really could control how many hours of study a person gets. Now, what we're going to be doing is model grade as some function of the quantitative number of study hours. And we're going to have a little error component in this model. Certainly, the degree to which somebody scores high or low on the exam won't be due just to studying. There are certainly individual differences that will account for whether somebody does well or not. So, even if somebody is studying the same amount as somebody else, their scores will probably differ. That's what individual error will capture in this model. Now, we'll come back to error in just a few minutes, but let's actually look at some data and see how we would model this relationship. So here are six students that we randomly assign to different amounts of study. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11 hours. We also have the grades that each of these students received on that final exam. Now looking at these scores in the table doesn't really illuminate the relationship, so let's actually plot these scores in the scatter plot. Remember, a scatter plot is simply showing for each student their study time and their final percentage as a single point. So Tom studied 11 hours and Tom scored a 91, so Tom occupies a single point in this plot. Now in a scatter plot, we can see the relation between these variables pretty clearly. And of course, these are contrived data, so the relationship is meant to be clear. But in this case, what you're probably doing mentally is drawing a line of fit between these points. That is, you're seeing the trajectory, that is, students who are studying more tend to be the students who do better. And by drawing that line, you're in essence imputing a relation between these variables. That is, incrementing study hours up also increments final percentage. Now, even though we haven't used any formulas yet, and even though we haven't learned about the modeling tools that will allow us to draw this line, most of you could probably draw this line pretty well. That is, you could probably pick the best fitting line between these points. And what you would be doing is drawing what's known as the regression line.